All right, so right now I'm out here at the corner of the 1608 addition to James Fort. And just to rehash, uh, we know from the records that in 1608, Captain John Smith writes that James Fort was reduced to five square form, which actually means altered to take on the shape of a five-sided fort. So that addition was made to the east of the triangular fort, out where I am standing right now at the, uh, the corner of that addition, where, to our surprise, we've uncovered yet another James Fort period building in the form of a large cellar that's about 22 feet long by about 14 feet wide. So I think when we last updated you, we weren't entirely sure this was a cellar, uh, but now we are. We, we have a nice uh, corner to the cellar. Uh, we have uh, verified that there is indeed a post hole in that corner. The post hole we found earlier this season at the uh, corner of the Fort Edition uh, appears to be uh, tied into this building. It lines up with two other post holes, including the one in the cellar, suggesting that this building we are uncovering now is indeed sort of a part of the Fort Edition incorporated into it, which is interesting because just uh, back in the, uh, the mid-90s, just to our south, we found at the other corner of the 1608 addition to James Fort, another similar building actually tied in to the Fort addition wall. So this, this building, if you will, complements that one to our, our south. So there seems to be a pattern emerging here. Since we last updated you, we have been experimenting a little bit with some modern technology out here with the, with the cellar feature. Uh, when we had the folks from the University of Kentucky and the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet come out here, they actually dragged ground penetrating radar equipment across the unexcavated portions of this feature and were able to verify that it's at least a, um, a two meters or six, about six feet uh, deep, which is pretty typical for the depth we often see with the cellars at the fort site here. So in addition to having the ground penetrating radar, we also had a fellow from town by the name of John Sutton come out here and volunteer his time with a, an aerial drone and we got some photography of this site, of the cellar, from about 100, 100 plus, uh, 150 feet above, which was neat to see uh, because you could really see the cellar kind of squaring up or taking up, you can kind of see a rectangular form to it very well from that height. As per usual, there are artifacts coming out of the fill layers of the cellar as we've continued down and we're, we're about four feet into the cellar uh, over here behind me. And um, the last few weeks we've had some interesting finds. We had a beautiful uh, copper alloy jetton uh, made by uh, Hans Krauwinkel out of Nuremberg uh, back in the third quarter of the 16th century. So decades before Jamestown was even founded this item was produced. And jettons were uh, counting tokens. The Europeans were still using Roman numerals, so they would do mathematical equations by sliding these tokens around on a board, uh, kind of like the Japanese uh, abacus for doing mathematics, uh, but the European equivalent. We also had a, um, a complete uh, horn to uh, likely a, a goat um, come out of the feature. That's unusual. It's, you know, I've been here 20 years and it's the first one of those I've uh, uh, come across. Okay, so in addition to those artifacts, I'm, I'm holding a tray here of artifacts found in the last uh, few days, uh, and an interesting pattern is emerging in regards to the faunal or the animal uh, bones. We have mostly wild animal remains, and that's, that's a good sign as far as a James Fort period goes, because the earlier we are in the history, the more the colonists were foraging, scavenging for their food. So we're seeing a lot of sturgeon scoots, which are the bony plates for the, the sturgeon, the, the large fish that used to uh, thrive in the river in great numbers. We've got uh, turtle, they're, they're eating turtle. We have uh, look, what looks to be, uh, I guess, either goose or wild turkey, very large bird bones. Uh, the only uh, domesticated faunal I'm seeing here are a few, uh, a few pig bones here and there. In addition to the animal bones in here, it looks like a, a jack plate. These are the, uh, the iron armor plates that are sewn into canvas uh, coats called uh, jack of plate. So we're going to shift now 
inside. Uh, some of the crew are going to be working on uh, reports, website uh, material, uh, working with the uh, collections. There's going to be a lot of research going on. And uh, stay tuned for some updates from uh, the winter months coming from the lab and the, uh, the current findings in there. Not all discoveries are made out here. A lot of discoveries are made inside.